Melvin Jackson Jr., you're the star, co-writer, executive producer, and casting director of This Eddie Murphy Role Is Mine, Not Yours. Now, in the first episode, Brandon says that you look like Eddie Murphy, and then later uh, in another episode, you mentioned that you're mistaken for him uh, by an Asian kid. Uh, is getting confused for Eddie Murphy something that happens to you all the time, and was that the inspiration for the series? I won't say get mistaken. I get compared to him whether I look like him or people think that I remind him, um, remind him, um, uh, them of, of him. So that was kind of the thing, uh, was the reason why I did it for so many years. People kept saying, you like Eddie Murphy, you should do something with him. And so I said, well, listen, why not? And uh, have you heard from Eddie Murphy about this uh, series? No, I haven't. I have, um, you know, people who, who are either his family members or friends have watched it and loved it and said they would share it with him. But I'm not sure if um, he's watched it yet. All right. Uh, walk me through making this series. Uh, when did you start? How long did it take? Um, I started about three years ago. I wrote it and, you know, I kind of had something, but then I didn't, you know, some things fell through and I didn't end up shooting it. And so I sat down with my wife one day. I said, hey, I need you to read this. Can you, you know, let me know what you think. And so she read it and she was just giving me notes. And so we started revising it together and kind of getting it to the point where it's at now. And I told my friends, um, hey, I want to shoot this and submit it for Emmy consideration because last year, you know, a friend of mine, Kim S's, one in the same category. So I said, you know, I want to submit myself as an actor and also my web series and be considered and see what happens. And so here we are. <laughs> so why play yourself in the show as opposed to just an actor? Um, just because, I, you know, I think I wanted to show people that, you know, sometimes what we go through as actors. Um, so, you know, situations where you, you may go in for an audition that you think you, you might, it may be right for, but you don't get it. And so it was just kind of a funny take on um, you know, me making fun of myself, but also having a serious moment as well and just saying real life struggles where you want something, but you know how it can be sometimes that if you're not a big name or you're not, you know, don't have enough credits, you may not, you know, get the role. So we don't see Eddie Murphy in the show, but we see uh, a character who's supposed to be Kevin Hart. Uh, tell me about uh, that decision or how you decide, you know, what famous actors to have in or have people playing them. Because I felt like, you know, it was a funny take, you know, everyone, every comedian is going to want to play Eddie Murphy, of course. And so Kevin Hart being who he is, he's always busy doing a lot of things. I feel like it'd be funny if now all of a sudden you're like, oh, man, Kevin Hart's coming up. I really got to take him out now. So that was the, the, the reason for that. It was like, I need to have, because I just, in my mind, I wanted to have a Kevin Hart because I said at the end, it's going to be a big star coming in. And you're going to definitely be intimidated because you're like, Kevin Hart's going to, oh, man. So I had to take him out. <laughs> yeah, uh, tell me about that ending because I assume that you know maybe at the end of this you would have taken out all your competition, but it seems like they're still auditioning people and you haven't quite gotten the role yet. Uh, so uh, how did you decide where to end this uh, story? Well, that I mean that was it. Where it's just like you know you you're pretty much taking out your competition. You're trying to get people in to take it out before they even go in. So that's how it is. You leave an audition and. Soon enough, you somebody else is walking in, and so you're hoping that that's the last person that they're gonna see. So that was like, I he said, break a leg, and he's like, well, I don't like break a leg, and so I broke his leg. So he had his legs broken in the sense of, you know, just kind of, you know, ending it on that note and saying, you know, these people say good luck and they break a leg, and it's like, why do we say that? And so that and that reference was a perfect way to end it. So do you think that he goes on to get the role? My character, uh, yeah. Character. yeah. He gets he gets the role, and so now he has to live up to all the things that he's done. Now he has to really be good at it. So that was, those those will be the trials and tribulations moving forward in future episodes. Okay, so do you think there will be future episodes then? It, at first, it wasn't, but because so many people have reached out to me and said they want more episodes, they even talked about a series. I think I'm um, you know I have to give the people what they want. So I'm trying to find a way to make it make sense, but not being over overkill. So I think it's just all about being creative with the process of it. And how do you decide where to break these episodes up? Because if you run the whole thing together, and there's even a version of that on your, on your uh, YouTube channel where it's just the whole thing, it's 10 minutes long. Like, how do you decide that you have six episodes as opposed to maybe like a short film that you might try to push for Oscar instead of Emmy consideration? Well, that's what it was when I first decided to do it. It was going to be a short, short, um, um, short film. And so, um, of course, having to be submitted for Emmy consideration, it has to be six episodes. So then I'm like, okay, I gotta cut it up. And so I actually had shot some, some footage 
And it was it wouldn't have made sense to cut up in six episodes with what I had. So then I had to go back and shoot two uh, two more additional scenes to kind of fill out the the gap. And so that's when I kind of like okay it has to have a beginning, middle, and end. And so that was me kind of going and seeing what makes sense to cut. Um, it's sometimes I feel like it's better to watch it all the way through. Um, but of course, for the purpose of the Emmy consideration, I, I had to cut it up into six episodes. I, I wonder if one of these changes was at the beginning of episode three, where it begins one hour later. And that's the only intertitle of the series. So I'm wondering why it was important. Um, just because you see where he's, he's dreaming. And so you kind of want to have that, that split of gaps. So people know he was dreaming because some people was, was kind of confused in the beginning when people were letting watch it. Um, they didn't understand, they didn't quite get that he was dreaming. So I wanted to be like, okay, he wakes up from the dream. Hour later, now he's going into the audition. Okay, and then episode three is also the only one with narration. Some of this is comedic, but some of it's also expository. So how do you decide as a storyteller when narration is necessary? Well, it was definitely necessary because I wanted people to understand where Rob came from and that, you know, that was uh, from Brandon saying, I have an idea. So that was kind of filling in the gap instead of going and shoot more episodes, more um, scenes. I wanted to just fill that, that in with a voiceover. And so that was kind of a perfect way to do it without having to shoot more because I'm like, I got to shoot more. So that was really the, the basis of that. And did you shoot all the episodes together or is this kind of something that you did when you had time for a long period or what, what's the process there? From episode, part of like, yeah, from episode, the part of uh, when he's doing the, the stand up comedy, when he's in the leather outfit, that was all from that point on was done in, in one day. And then the beginning of me and Brandon's um, scene and then the part when I'm doing different Eddie Murphy characters, that was another day. Okay. Uh, so, I actually watch the the series on YouTube. Uh, each episode, you know, as a different link, right? Because that's uh, the way it's presented for Emmy consideration. So some of these episodes are not even two minutes, but they still have 34 seconds of opening credits and 48 seconds of end credits. Uh, so, so why did you feel the need to put them on all six episodes? Um, I, I I guess I guess if some people don't watch all of them through, then you still get to see you know the credits and stuff like that. I think that was one of the things that you know we're talking about before is just like if a person watches all the way through, they kind of want to go straight to that next episode. But I was just like, well, you know, kind of what if everybody doesn't watch the episodes and some people have favorite episodes and don't watch it all the way through. So it's just, you know, it was kind of like for creative purposes, if a person say, hey, I want you to watch episode two. Well, now they get to see the credits. If they didn't, you know, if the credits were in there, they wouldn't really have that. So it was kind of like a decision of, of saying, showcasing the talent that's a part of the project. So in the opening credits, there's a shot of the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame and you, the star that's in focus is the late actress, Marie Wilson. So I'm wondering what's her significance to you or this project? I mean, it, it was, and it was kind of by coincidence. Um, the, the director and editor, he chose, you know, we, I told him the footage that I wanted and so I guess that was just happened to be a coincidence that he he landed on that um, of her on her. Okay, and uh, what's your relation to the director? Um, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he's definitely you know someone that believed in my vision, and and um you know I was happy to have him a part of this project. And he wanted we wanted to shoot it like a movie, and I feel like you know that's what we came up across with that that image, and people you know love the 4K look that we have, and I think it was just you know brilliant idea what he what he came up with. So this is a show where you very much had the Emmys in mind kind of from the start. Yeah. Uh, so, so why would you say the Emmys, uh, like a nomination, a win is so important to you uh, for your career as an actor? I mean, I think it's definitely important because it just, you know, to be, to, the one to be nominated for, you know, a project that you wrote and produced and, and you know, starred in is, is very key as, as the creator in this, in this business. And, you know, it shows people that you're just not an actor. And so for me, the, the nomination is, is, is important. And also the win even helps me to get in um, different doors that I normally wouldn't have been able to get into. So it, it is, you know, one of those things where you take in consideration of, you know, what these accolades actually do for your career, where you see people go on and do amazing things. So I think that now that with the nomination, people who didn't know who I am now know who I am. And know, so the win is just, you know, icing on the cake for me. And uh can you tell us any about you know what doors this has opened so far? I mean, definitely, you know, people seeing the creative side of, of me is seeing that I, you know, my ability to write and produce and 
come up with a concept that is, you know, different than, than we've seen before. So I, I think that it's opened up even more doors in a sense that people now have taken more notice if they hadn't before. So a lot of people who were my supporters have just kind of seen the journey and seen the growth. And so they're also sharing it with their people who don't know who I am. And so it's just definitely, you know, a, a, a beautiful thing to see when people really get to see your, your craft and see you work and, which, and do what you love. So there are like countless, uh, you know, web series on YouTube. How did you know that you had something special with this project? Um, because I feel like who doesn't love Eddie Murphy? And so, you know, us growing up as kids, we would watch Beverly Hills Cops coming to America. So it was something for me that I wanted to pay homage to him and remind people of the amazing work that he's done and his movies have grossed over two point billion um, billion dollars. And, you know, it, it was one of those things I just wanted to do as an actor to pay homage to people who opened up doors for us. And so that that's what separated my, my web series from you know others. And it was just something that I think for like other actors could relate to, wanting something so bad that you're like, oh, well, I take somebody out for it, but just in a joking manner, but just really wanting something so bad that you know you can't let anything get in your way. Do you think that's what struck a chord uh, with the actors who voted for you to get the nomination? Uh, I, I think it's just really, you know, people that get to know me, see my passion and see how hard I work. And so, you know, there's no one trick pony. There's no certain things. I'm like, hey, do this, do that. It's just I come, you know, as me, genuine. And I think that's important to people that get to know me, that that vote for me, that they know me as a person first and then, you know, get to know me as an actor and producer and just see, you know, that I work hard to be where I'm at. And, you know, they believe in me. So I'm definitely appreciative of that and understand they could have voted for anybody else, but they chose, you know, me as one of the, the nominees. So we're a website that's dedicated to you know, showbiz awards. So yeah, walk us through running your own Emmy campaign. Well, I, I came into this this um, this campaign saying that I wanted to um, campaign like a politician, like I was running for office. Because last year I, I, I campaigned and I didn't do it as, as hard as I did this year. And I said I have to you know think outside the box. So I started thinking about you know what things I could do that was cost effective. Um, I was thinking billboards, and of course my wife was like, no, that's too expensive. So I then got uh, car decals, and I, I put, you know, all around for your Emmy consideration. I got business cards, social media, build a, um Emmy campaign team of friends and family that, you know, just, just they needed their help, and everybody had different resources, and we just really hit the ground moving. And, um, you know, voters got to see, I even got T-shirts made. So it was it really... Uh, a thought out process and, you know, then implemented my wife in that. So me and her campaign together and just just really got things going and people to really notice and, and see what we're doing instead of just being in your face type of thing, but just kind of being subtle and just being true human beings. And that that was kind of the key of the, the campaign. I didn't want to stab anybody in the back and really, you know, go go crazy with it, but just really have fun with it. So you've got a GoFundMe page up for uh, hoping to raise ten thousand dollars. So, our billboards, I guess, those would be in the cards. What are your other uh, ambitions, I guess, in this Emmy campaign? Well, well, definitely, you know, um, just to open up more doors in the sense of the short form category, like to just the, you know, it's bigger than just me in the sense of um, being nominated. But I think a lot of people really don't know about the short form category, and so it's important to that other creators that don't know. Um, about the the um, the short form category to to know about it, and then also you know, it's, just, it's like I said, I'm running this like a you know politician with. So you need sometimes you need, you need funding to to carry on a campaign, and so you know I've you know kind of spend a whole lot of money, and so it's just like for that I just felt like you know people who really want to support they say how can we support, and so that was to, I was told to create that um, to kind of just help with the cost of everything so that I don't. Um, go broke trying to, you know, compete with other um, studios. And so that was really the key for the, the um, GoFundMe. Yeah, this is only the third year of the category. And, you know, there are not a, lot, a ton of submissions, but an Emmy is an Emmy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me about getting nominated uh, with your wife, Kelly Jenrette, who I actually interviewed a couple weeks ago. Yes. Um, it was amazing because, you know, I see how hard she works. And so I was really, truly happy for her. Um, that when I um, went to look at the, nom the nominees, I saw her name, I immediately called her and said, babe, you're nominated. Um, and I was more concerned about her than myself because I'm just, I just see 
how hard she works and her category was really tough. She had 167 people in a category and I was like, you're one of the people that were nominated. Like that's truly amazing. And so I was, you know, happy for her and, you know, for us both to get nominated. I think it was, it's amazing because we both get to experience this a joyous occasion together. And we're just kind of on cloud nine right now, still in disbelief, like, wow, they, they chose us. And so we don't take it lightly at all. And have you always wanted to be an actor? Um, no, I actually uh, was used to manage. I used to manage artists when I first got into the business. So I was on the business side of things and kind of tripped and fell into acting and said, hmm, this is something that's pretty fun and get paid to do. And um, the rest was history from that point on. And what do you have coming up next? Well, coming up, I'm working on a uh, domestic violence documentary called I'm a Survivor, No Longer a Victim. And I, I did that. I'm doing that because I feel like, you know, women who have gone through domestic violence, um, they, you know, they need a they need a, um, a voice in a sense of not just women, but men as well to speak up for them and bring awareness to the situation. Because I went to an event at the Jensen, uh, Jensen um, Center and um, at uh, Genesis Center. And I just heard these women's, um, you know, testimonies and things that they were going through. And Holly Berry was a part of the organization. And um, sorry, Halle Berry, let me get it right, uh, was a part of the, the, the organization. And so I just really felt compelled to do something about it as a man. And so that was my way of like helping tell the story and helping women to heal by sharing their story, by helping other women who are going through it. Well, uh, we'll look forward to that then. Melvin, thanks very much for taking the time to chat. Yeah, and congratulations you. on the Emmy nomination. And if people want to check out your web series, it's very accessible on YouTube, just like this. Yes, and they can also go on melvinjacksonjr.com as well.